In this video, we're going to transform our scene from no trees to lots of trees, and I'll show you guys how to import and place the trees step by step, and then ask you to do the same in your scene. I've been looking forward to this stage in the project for a long time now. I love trees. We're going to be placing trees. We're going to have our level go from this fairly empty, bold-looking world, as bold as I am, to something that is full of trees. And maybe it's going to go from looking Rick today to Rick when he was young and in his late teens before kids and all those things that make your hair fall out. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up with trees. First of all, I'm going to say thank you to our pine tree that served us well. I believe this is the prefab here. Look for references in scene. There we go. Everything else that's grayed out. We've got just those little placeholder trees we've had there. I'm going to select the whole kit and caboodle over here and delete those guys. So now it is Rick with a even more refined haircut. There we go. Super duper bald. Awesome. Now there's... In terms of uh, placing trees, that was the that was the manual way. We just drop a prefab straight in and plop it in the spot. As you guys know, there's a better way, which is coming over here and using the place trees option. Now, within place trees, you can't just put any old trees in there. You have to put trees that have been specially created to be unity terrain placing trees. I'm not going to go into super detail in terms of how the trees are constructed, how you could construct trees, how Mikey constructed these trees, the tree editor in Unity. There's a lot of ways for you to make trees and foliage if you're interested in that. For this particular conversation, we're putting our level design hat on, our set dressing hat on, and we're saying, let's make our world look good by grabbing some tree assets and putting them in in there. So as you guys know, there's a few ways to go about doing that. We can go to the asset store and search for trees in here. You guys know how to use the asset store. Come in here, search for trees. Got a bunch of different things, different options depending upon it's very cartoony or very realistic. Uh, you can grab the trees you want. Have a look at these guys here. These cost money. Some of them cost money. Some of them are free. Again, just like everything on the asset store. These are looking very good and very realistic. I think that's great. And this is where you need to start Sorry, you need to continue being very vigilant and making sure that the style of assets you bring in match the style of your world. For our world, we're going for a little bit more, slightly more stylized, slightly more cartoony, and the trees from here just wouldn't match our world. Similarly, if you go into import package, uh, let's see, environment, you can find within here some standard asset trees that you can bring straight in and start playing around with that. The cool thing is if you place things, whether it's grass or textures or trees, and you wish to replace them later on, it's as easy as switching in the new asset. So you can go through this stage now, even if you're not sure what exact asset you're going to be using. You could go and find the speed tree, a broadleaf tree or a conifer or a palm, and you could drop those in there. So if you wish to use the standard asset trees, there they are right there. For us, Mikey has made us uh, a bunch of cool trees, and I've gone in today and tinkered with them a little bit. Hopefully that is okay with him. I've gone and messed around with the textures a bit to make them even more stylized and wacky. So I'm going to head on over to Assets Import Package. And this is a package that I'll be providing for you guys as well, the Colorful Pine Trees Package. I'll click on that. You can see it's going to bring it into environment, so that's where we'll need to go look for it and then shuffle it into our appropriate folder structure as we like. Just import those. There should be six trees, I believe, in here. I'm going to import them in, as I said, down in environment. We've got pine trees, so this is the folder structure at the moment. We've got the the blend files, .blend. We've also got uh, PNGs as texture and materials for each of these guys and, of course, the prefab. So I'm going to grab all of these and bring them over into World Objects Foliage. So I've got them in one spot. And then I'll go and nuke this folder because we don't need it anymore. Thank you, folder. Okay, so let's go and look. I'm always excited. It's like Christmas, isn't it? When you get new assets, what can we do? What can we place? And I'm going to go find a little bit of a test area over here, the other side of the hills. You guys may have noticed you've been looking at my level for quite some time now. I wasn't too happy that this just kind of went off into the distance. So I put some hills there so that if we do a camera fly through some sort of like, you know, this is the, let me get my camera right. This is what's going on in here. Like, oh, they've attacked. There's the castle. Like if we do any sort of camera fly through to set the scene, uh, then it's good to make sure we've got it blocked all around. And obviously for you guys with your fancy uh, first person follow or third person follow cameras, you want to make sure that you block it off and people can't see the outside of your world. We're getting to that point now where we've got to start thinking about those things. There's a little bit of a gap down there that I would need to address if I had a follow camera, but because we've got our 
third person camera that's fixed. It's going to be from this kind of angle. I don't really need to worry about down this direction. But anyway, stuff to think about if that's relevant for your game. Now, get on with the trees, you say. <laughs> okay, we'll go over here. This is where I was heading before I got sidetracked. And I'm going to select prefabs. So I just get my prefabs, head on down to foliage. And I need to, sometimes it bounces you out of prefab. There we go. Prefab, click on foliage that way. That's the way to find it. And you can see I've got these previous ones. This was the old pine tree. And this was just a quick and dirty that Mikey whipped together that we put in there. I think it's actually pretty good from a stylized, chunky point of view. I think we could have some of those way off in the distance, lower poly than the ones I'm about to bring in. But the ones I'm going to bring in, we've got the tall, thin pine tree. And I've gone in and created a little bit of extra uh, messing around in the textures. This field looks pretty bright. We're going to have it a little bit darker when we put it in our scene. I've got a tall, thin, what's this guy here, orange and I've got a tall, thin red, and then I've also got a wide pine tree, a white, green, white pine tree, bluish. I want to try around with that, see how it goes, and an orange. And there'll be some of you that are currently throwing things, throwing your keyboard at the screen and saying, but Rick, pine trees are coniferous and don't actually uh, go orange. Yes, that is correct. So we might need to rename these something. So those of you who have degrees in treeology won't get too upset with me. Um, but uh, that's what we've got at the moment. We've got three cool looking trees that we can splash around. So what I'm going to do, it's it's not a science. If you guys want to get a reference image, then I highly recommend that either from a game that you like, where you're like, that's the way I want it represented. I want my foliage to look uh, like Skyrim, or I want my uh, my trees to look like, uh, for me, I think Torchlight 2 is closer to the style we're going for. If you want to do that, that's cool. Grab yourself a reference image now so you're not just flying blind. If you're making a game that's very realistic, then look for realistic reference. If you're making a game that's more stylized, then you don't need to be so realistic. And just a little tip for you guys in terms of realism versus stylized. So if you look at our trees over here, we'll jump back to these guys that we had. Uh, they're... They don't, they kind of look like trees, right? That's not exactly how a tree looks. Some of those asset store, like this is what a tree actually looks like. Thousands of little leaves, lots of detail, lots of texture. If you're aiming for realism, you've got to get really close to realism or else it looks quite terrible. If you're aiming for stylized, then so long as all your styles fit together, people are okay. The player will be totally accepting that there's no tree that really looks that like that in real life, but it's a representation. So for us, I think it's a lot easier to make a game that isn't trying to be realistic. So I don't want my lake to try to look realistic. I don't want my houses to be exactly realistic because then uh, people get pretty upset if, it, if it's not perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start creating my library of trees. Click over here into the place trees area, edit trees, add tree. First of all, we will add the green thin Drop that in there, add, hey presto, that's created. We'll just go do a little test to make sure that works. Click, make sure I've clicked on him, and boom, there we go. How cool is that? That's way better than hand placing a whole ton of them. We'll get to these twiddly things in a moment. For now, I'm just going to bring in each of these. Actually, no, I'm going to do it the other way around. Sorry, you guys, I will... So let's just out here in our test area, let's just have a little look at what we can put in. We've got brush size, which does the same as when we're doing anything. Blomp, and if I keep clicking, it keeps filling it in. Let me hold shift and delete all of those, most of those. I'm going to make the brush size a bit more sensible. Back to here, tree density, obviously super dense. It'll be a full, tightly packed circle. If it is uh, not very dense, then you'll get a couple. And that's more obvious if we make this huge. Blonk, it's quite sparse. If you keep clicking it, then it keeps filling it up. So if I go click, 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 it probably, no, that's about as much as it wants to get in terms of density. Okay, in terms of tree height, so we can randomize it or we can have it exact. I like a little bit of random. I think that looks good in general. I would find the lower point by going down here and saying, uh, how big is that? We kind of need a character for reference, don't we? We need a... We need an enemy or a player, so I'll go over here, I'll just drop an enemy so I've got a reference point. If you're doing it blind out here, you might be accidentally making this for giants. Okay, oh, I've gone and dropped those. Oh no, these are, we're going to delete these in a moment. These were just my test ones, weren't they? Delete my test ones. And uh, if we go over here, I'm going to grab an enemy. Whoops, if I go over here, I'm going to grab an enemy. Let's go to the right place in characters. 
Some guy tidied all this up the other day. It's like when your mum comes in and tidies up your room and then you can't find anything. Okay. Not that I still live with my mum. Uh, okay. <laughs> and a shout out to any mums out there that are watching this video. Welcome. Welcome to join us. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The relationship between character and tree, I like that. So if we click back into here and find the lower point of a tree, that's going to be uh, oh, little saplings. Probably a bit too small. We want to have them a little bit bigger, I think. If we want to have little trees to represent this as a growth part of the forest, then I think we would go in and hand, you know, we hand place, we'd say, now we want these small. But I'm going to be laying down just general trees. So that looks pretty good at the lower end. And then I'm going to scoot up to the upper end. That looks quite gigantic, but that's good. We'll go gigantic for now. So the range we've got is about this. And if I place down a whole bunch, you'll see. I like the variation in that. Variation's good. If it looks too consistent, it's a bit boring. Unless you're making some sort of weird Truman Show, utopic, every tree is exactly the same as the other. There's a, I think there is something in that. That'd be kind of cool. Color variation. This is going to, all the way down to zero, it's just going to keep it at this very bright color. If we put it all the way up to one, then the trees will range from very bright to very dark. There's not so much of a slider on here, which is a bit of a bummer. And uh, so I'm going to put it about there. So I want to have some dark trees in there, probably a little bit higher. I think that leaves good variation. We skipped over locked width to height. I want to have some randomness in the width. Same as before, we can see how skinny is the skinniest of trees. I need to grab like this. And that is pretty skinny. <laughs> that isn't a very good tree now, is it? Let's see what the skinniest tree we would like to have is. That's uh, close. That's probably about as skinny as we want our skinny skinny tree to be. And then if we pump some more out, pretty good. Because we do have a wider tree we're going to use as well. So all the things, those are all the things we need to consider in there at the moment. I'm going to create, uh, in a moment, I'm going to create my other trees. But for now, what I'm going to do is issue you guys a challenge, which is to go into your level, go into your scene, and place down some trees, either to import the trees from the pack that I give you or the asset store or the standard assets and then place them where you want them. And a couple of things, be sure to check that your camera is not blocked. Don't go put gigantic trees in the foreground because then you might not be able to see it unless you want to have the character run behind them and have that as an effect. That can be cool, but make sure it's deliberate. And also check your performance. So we're about to throw a whole bunch of things into our world and if you're like me, you're going to be heavy handed and you'll have a forest of 3 billion trees. So just make sure that your game still runs just fine. You don't get any weird character movement like what happened when I put the water in there and uh, you're generally happy with how it looks. And jump in and do that and when you come back, I'll take you through the process of me putting some trees into my level. And welcome back. First thing I need to do in here is to add in the other trees. I'm going to keep them relatively grouped together. They're not trees, they're enemies. That'd be fun trying to drop an enemy in there. Okay, the tall, thin orange tree I will have next. Add. And there's a few other things you can tweak in terms of things like bend factor and the wind and stuff. For now, we're just placing them. We're not worrying about all of those other nifty things that we could be doing. Next, I would like to add my red tree. Drop him into adding tree, add. Next up, we're going to create the wide green guy or gal. Not sure. Do trees have gender? I don't think trees do have gender. I think they're probably gender. Actually, maybe they're both genders, don't they? They drop seeds and then they give birth to babies. No, I don't, I don't think trees work that way, do they? Anyway, you guys can write in the Q&A, how are trees made? And give me a lesson on that. There we go. That's me stalling for time. Now I've got my trees in there. Let's just do a little test over here. If we do something very cool, like we uh, do mass place trees, then I can place trees everywhere on the map. Look at that. How cool. Wonderful. I love it. Level done. That was very minimal effort. Oh, no. We've got some in the water. Okay. That's probably not how we want to do it. We'll undo that. Control or, or the apple symbol thingy with Z. Undo. Okay. So I'm going to... Just do a quick test. They seem fine. Those guys seem pretty good. They seem all right. Looks good with the blue guy and with the orange guy. Great. So who are we going to put down first? What are we going to do? Uh, again, make a story. I'm going to start by putting some, just splashing some trees over here, uh, over the top of our water folly kind of area. Put in some of these uh, fatter guys. 
just to drop them around. I need a little bit better density than that. I think a smaller brush, bigger density is good. Drop, oop, hey, that looks kind of cool. So that's a very foresty. This will be in the background, so the player will see this off in the distance, I think is good. Yeah, that might be a little bit too dense there. Uh, I'll just hold shift to delete them and then put them back in. Not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the outer area first, L lead up to doing the inner area. I'm going to put down some green guys, fairly, fairly willy-nilly. Willy-nilly, do you guys have that expression? Willy-nilly means just wherever. Just to, to, to make a starting point, put something down. And then over here, I'm going to put similar. You know what, over this side, I'd probably like to have a little bit more color. So that's probably enough for these, just my filler trees for a starting point. Let's get some tall orange guys. Let's make sure the width, yeah, we want it fairly fat, not too tall. And we'll drop a couple of these down to give ourselves a little bit of flavor. The player's probably only going to see these ones close to the edge, but that's a good spot to do some color, a little bit less tree density, I think. And actually, I'll leave the tree density up. I'll just make the brush size a bit smaller. Okay, it's good. So I'm going for a, in terms of theme, in terms of direction, this is not just totally guessing. I want to get a little bit of a oranges and autumn type of feel in there, splashing some of those down. I want to get some trees along the edge here. Getting a little bit of interesting blue along here, I think. Whoops, I didn't click on the blue. Interesting blue guys along the edge here. Just that's going to be off in the distance as the player, as if and when the player runs out of town, there might be some of these trees look a little bit like a crop, perhaps. That could be something we do in the future. Actually, I might just have these blue trees as, as some sort of interesting crop that's being farmed out here. So, whoop, so that uh, to denote, whenever you see blue, it means some sort of farming type thing or some sort of foresty forestry type thing as opposed to just random trees. Where else do we want some of those? Probably over here. Why blue, you say? I don't know. It just kind of feels a little bit wacky and a little bit random, like this world would have some blue trees in it. Mikey might come in and say, blue, who on earth, who in their right mind made blue trees? And then I'll have to say, Ben did it. And then, <laughs> and then when, when Ben pleads uh, ignorance, I'll say, well, maybe it's just a glitch. Maybe Unity had a bug. And then and finally, I guess I'll own up and say, I wanted to try some blue trees, Mikey. I hope that's okay. And there we go, a little bit of that. You know what I'm excited to do is when you first enter this town area, what are we going to do over here? Probably some of these tall green guys over on the, f the background. So the camera will be over this side. So we can have these ones fairly tall to hide a bit of that view as you come around the corner. Okay, pretty densely packed. Right, whoops, that was me trying to move and accidentally putting down a bunch of guys. And then a little bit over here to say, you're not supposed to go through that way. There's dense forest. That's one of the industries of the region. That's how they make their money. Okay, so that's blocking that direction. And a couple of red guys in here just to give it a little bit of flavor. So as you run through, it looks a bit more interesting than just a solid wall of green. I think that's, oh, that's a, that one's a bit too prominent, isn't it? Let's we'll see if we can get a different one. There we go. Nice. Okay, so I'm going for this colorful effect. And again, it's similar to the textures. You don't just lay down one texture and hope for the best. You lay down two or three or four and have a mixture of it. Same with our trees. And in this foreground here, because it's going to get in the camera's way most likely, I'm going to be a little bit careful about what I put over here. I'll probably need to put them a lot uh, closer, a lot uh, more. What's the terminology I'm looking for? Not right on the top is what I want to say. But these ones are going to give us some good color, I think. And I'll get a couple of tall ones to be poking through. And, yep. So we'll see a little bit of that. I'm going to pause now and put a whole bunch of trees down. So you guys, if you want to keep putting some more down, that's cool. And then I'll show you in a moment where I'm at before I wrap up this video. Okay, here's where I'm at with my level. I've put a bunch of trees down. Trees around the outside. Trees in the inside. I've tried to put a little bit of extra flavor down here where there's a big opening, a big gap. And everywhere that the player looks, I want to see that there's trees off in the distance. I want to have it reasonably open in the middle of here, so it's not trees everywhere over the whole thing, but enough trees that it makes it feel like a village and gives it the flavor I'm after. So that's it for me for the tree video, and hopefully it went well for you guys. I will see you in the next video.